Every game needs a face. Any big hero swaps coming here? No Reinhardt's, no Zarius yet. Dragonblade time, there goes altering a kill. Four Seagull gets both supports, and the gull of the sea swoops in. An ambassador to lift it from the screen and give it the kind of intrinsic value that makes us fall in love. Uh, excellent, man. Well, thank you very much for your time. And we're going to send it back to the desk right now. Oh, you, oh yeah, you can me. Oh, shake my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm not going to leave you hanging. When Overwatch was in its infancy, its faithful followers needed somewhere to go to keep their Overwatch famished eyes satisfied. And they found that in a bird. This is actually... Oh, my goodness. That's yeah. so good. Oh, that's the one itself. There you go. This is the story of that bird who became professional Overwatch's first hero. This is the story of Seagull. Brandon Seagull Larned has had a journey through esports fit for a bird an avian voyage that soars through multiple games, a foray into the world of Twitch, the bright lights of the Overwatch League stage, and then right back to the comfort of his streaming setup. Seagull's journey started with Team Fortress 2, joining Classic Mixup in 2013 as a demo man and roaming soldier, competing with the team in three major events that year. GG's are coming out. Wow. Mixup wins season 15 LAN, taking home the biggest cash prize since the CGS, the biggest cash prize in our game in five years. Unbelievable. TF2 is often heralded as a major influence for Overwatch, and these kinds of class-based shooters ask a lot from their top performers. You've got to have the aim, game sense, and precision of a Counter-Strike Pro, all while mastering a number of unique characters and kits. As Seagull was playing with Classic Mixup, the era of MOBA dominance was fully underway, and Counter-Strike was the shooter of choice for esports fans. But at BlizzCon 2014, Blizzard announced their modern-day iteration of the class-based shooter, Overwatch. And unlike any game that had come before it, it was specifically designed to facilitate competitive gameplay. So my friends, get a load of this. We hope you love it like we do. I'll see you on the other side. Seagull's popularity outside the TF2 scene began to rise with the official release of Overwatch on May 24th, 2016. He immediately started to play the game at a high level and identified characters that matched his TF2 skill set while adapting to the more complex MOBA style abilities that were present in Overwatch. I really, really wanted to become a pro gamer in any way that I could, whether that was streaming, whether that was competing, no matter what. I wanted to build something for myself. And the biggest thing that I found about it was I could sit there and I could learn the game and I could teach it to other people. And then you realize you actually have so many more people who care about you, just you as a person outside of the pro scene. With his foray into Overwatch fully underway, Seagull wasted no time jumping right into Twitch, where fans were hungry for top tier gameplay. Got him. Siegel was a computer science major at Washington State University when his stream first started to blow up, and it was actually his parents who suggested he take a break from school in order to give full-time gaming a chance. Early in the Overwatch game, Siegel was the community's poster boy. People immediately fell in love with the game, but nobody knew how long it would take for the Overwatch League to come together. So they found comfort in watching a bird shoot some guns. <laughs> Peace! From the very beginning, there was only one way to describe Siegel's on-stream and public personality. Lovable. He then became a member of Team Luminosity right as all the major esports organizations started signing Overwatch rosters. During the early days of Overwatch, it was clear that the yearn for esports was there. 
but players like Seagull were relegated to third-party events. Anyway, $22,000 up for grabs here potentially in this next game. $15,000 to first, $7,000 to second. Envy is just one game away from the biggest prize purse in Overwatch history. Late in 2016, Overwatch started to grow and attract larger prize pools. Seagull was picked up by NRG Esports and qualified for the 2016 Overwatch World Cup with Team USA. During this time, Seagull also competed at Apex Season 1. Apex was often looked at by fans as a way of predicting what the Overwatch League would eventually look like, because it featured a mix of players from all over the world. And everyone wanted to know if players like Seagull would be able to stack up against Korea's best. Second break as well as he gets taken out. Dohyun has that Dragon Strike again, but Seagull comes in with the Death Blast Nano Boost. Onto Alara. Meanwhile, everybody gets caught up in that Graviton Surge. Enigma diving in there. Has a lot of damage built up on that Zarya. Seagull gets three. Here we go. Coming in. That's Graviton Surge used by both teams, actually. Sound Barrier as well. Energy has that shield, and they're going to use it to carry themselves through this team fight. Definitely starting out strong. Seagull looking for more victims. Takes out Doyun. Looks like this is going to be a point A take for energy. Looks like Sound Barrier coming through just in time, but the Blizzards lasting just long enough for energy to push a few back, and they get the point. That's the match. And energy takes a 3 0. The competitive scene was revving its engines, and Seagull was quickly becoming a recognizable face within a relatively faceless esport. As is true with other competitive endeavors like sports, it's been clear since the very beginning of esports that someone's celebrity can be as important to their brand as their skill level. And with Overwatch in its infancy, the hype surrounding the game was more about the much heralded Overwatch League and the game itself, not the people playing it. But Seagull was one of the few exceptions to that rule. Maybe the single most important moment in Seagull's rise to Overwatch notoriety was one simple handshake, or rather, a lack thereof. Uh, here's a guy who goes by the name of Seagull, finishing up an interview at a competition this week, and check out his cool handshake at the end, watch. Right, excellent, man, well thank you very much for your time, and we're gonna send it back to the desk right now. Oh, you, oh, yeah, <laughs> you me, shake my hand, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not gonna leave you hanging, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Hey, in case you missed it, let's get a closer look at that handshake. That's the... <laughs> With one outstretched hand at the Overwatch Open, met by maybe a little more resistance than expected, Seagull became the lovable goof we know today. And his Overwatch game was only getting better. As 2017 began, all eyes in competitive Overwatch were on Overwatch Contenders Season 1. The Overwatch League had officially been announced, and players were scrambling to show off their skills in order to land a coveted spot on one of the League's franchise teams. But in the bridge period between the game's launch and contenders, Overwatch kind of stagnated, and it's players like Seagull who helped the game stay relevant on Twitch by giving fans something to watch while the Overwatch League started its rollout. Oh no! No! God damn it. <laughs> As contenders started, Seagull left NRG and joined Team Envious in September 2017. Envious were one of the top North American teams during the contenders era, and with the Overwatch League's first season on the horizon, Seagull had separated himself as one of the best projectile players in the game. It's all well and good that he's big and red and angry, but he's going to get cut down very quickly, and you can see him attempts to access the payload. Harry Hook getting it done. Overtime is done. The Kings have returned to their throne. The Seagull is home to roost, and Envious get themselves that title. Contenders acted as a kind of proving ground. Many esports organizations fielded teams, and for players like Seagull, it was the place to show off his skills before rosters were finalized. Around this same time, organizations were purchasing their spots in Season 1 of the Overwatch League, and Team Envious was one of the 10 organizations to do just that. It was finally time for Seagull to test his skills on the game's biggest stage, as one of the faces of the Team Envious-operated Dallas Fuel. Not gonna see any big hero swaps coming here. No Reinhardts, no Zarya's yet. Dragonblade time, there goes altering a kill. Four Seagull gets both supports, and the Gull of the Sea swoops in. Seagull right now trying to loop all the way around the side. Oh, kids, Kuki and Jaehong, what? Those long-range rockets find their intended barrage. targets. Jaehong going to get resurrected, but they are surrounded right now. Seagull. 
Oh, Graviton Surge used early. Dragon Strike sent them straight through there. They have the combo available. Didn't need to use it. Oh, he even gets Rockus and Bonnie at the end. That is I 5k! For a lot of Overwatch's top players, the first stage of the Overwatch League was the scene's ultimate proving ground. With the exception of Apex, most Overwatch events had been regional, but OWL featured a mixture of the most highly touted players from all over the world. So, for players like Seagull and his teammates Taimu and XQC, it was time to show that they could hang with the best Korea had to offer. A feat Western players had long been chasing across esports. Inky into the well, courtesy of Flata, with some help from Toby. We'll give him some credit for that one. And that is it. Soul Dynasty will take a 2-0 here on Ilios. Oh, well, good opportunity for London. They only need that first tick to win the map. And those are the kills they're looking for. That's going to be it. London Spitfire will take the 3-1 victory over Dallas Fuel. Pine putting the icing on the victory cake here for NYXL. I think that's going to be it. It's just Coco with the Primal Rage, and he's not going to be enough. New York right. will win 3-1. to one. To say that the Fuel and Seagull's initial attempt at overcoming the insurgence of Korean talent during the early days of OWL was a failure would be an understatement. They finished Stage 1 with a 3-7 record, while they watched Korean-dominated super teams like the New York Excelsior and London Spitfire style under the bright lights. That trend continued into Stage 2, where they went 2-8. Uh, after that time period, pretty much coaching slash management lost all faith in me, is how I put it. I don't think I played in a scrim for probably four weeks by that point. Uh, it was just over three weeks. So, transition had happened, they had moved on without me, is the TLDR right? The Dallas Fuel's start to their time in the Overwatch League was just about as underwhelming as possible, and Siegel's role on the team and future were filled with question marks. But he would persevere. Somehow, Siegel was able to completely overhaul his Overwatch game seemingly overnight. A career damage dealer across multiple games honed into a tank player all to keep his dreams alive. I was told over team dinner that they were going to be signing Rascal, and so essentially they didn't have a new solid role for me that I was okay with. And I knew that we needed a second off tank player in case Mickey was sick. So in my head I'm going, okay, well, we only have one D.Va player, so I'm gonna go learn D.Va. Pretty much told them that I was going to go learn D.Va because I think that had a better value to the team than playing just like third string DPS by that point. But despite his stellar transition, the Fuel did not improve on their performance in Stage 3, where they went 1-9. It's going to be Soul Dynasty who flips the point back. Steady. Dallas Fuel has to touch. Steady as she goes, Effect is trying to dip his toe in the water, but no, he's pushed away! And that was the chance for the Fuel to finally get a win against Soul, but no, it's not going to be today! A pine falls on point B on Route 66, and your team wins anyway. Does it make a sound? I don't think it does. And look at that. You see the primal rage used Jeez. just to stay alive and on the payload. And, and, wow, and that's it. OG is going to jump in, wants to go after the widow, and realizes he's got to touch the card. I mean, you got Bonnie just healing right now. But yeah, you now that you have Cool Matt back, it is going to be a quick death there for OGE. All the chain heals going through. Cool Matt even going for the self destruct over. And a hard defeat here for the Dallas Fuel. Houston Outlaws, they reign supreme in Texas. The Fuel possessed some of the most beloved and recognizable faces in the game, but they couldn't put up the results their fans and the community expected. And unlike during Apex and Contenders, where he was a highly sought after Western talent, Seagull was a replaceable level player compared to the rest of the OWL's talent. When we lost our morale, it was definitely low from losing, but in a certain way, it was it was still okay. Like, we was just a temporary low, and everyone was kind of hard on themselves in a certain way. It's one thing to get outplayed. It's one thing for the opponent just to play better than you on a certain day. It's another thing to fall apart, and that's what happened. But as the league's fourth stage got underway, something extraordinary was happening. He's about to come online. Mickey with a big play, takes down Sato. Yeah, and Mickey needs to just yeah, group up with the rest of his team right now. Trying to get that rally in there. Oh! The, oh! the monster self-destruct from Siegel. Boombox and Shadow Burn both dead. There will be a self-destruct thrown in, but it's not going to matter. I'm in this game, you can revive the clay pigeons, Noah. Whoa! And Siegel, Siegel. Can get a 3K kangaroo. Oh, we'll self-destruct extravaganza right here, apparently. 
A lot of people said it. Tank heavy meta is going to favor the fuel. True. They run Mickey on the Brigitte. They run Seagull on the Diva now. The fruits of their labor for having Seagull practice so much off tank this season. Now it's coming back as a boon to the fuel. That's for sure, but the player to help them get it done is Seagull, I think. He has been so strong recently. When you look at his D.Va play, he's at the top of the charts for everything offensive. He can play the Genji, he can play the Hanzo, the Junkrat, the Farah, and he can have great performances <laughs> all over the place. And of course, there you go. The, the shot of the season, perhaps? <laughs> Seagull was flying again, and the Dallas Fuel were headed to the playoffs. He went from playing Genji and Farah to having the best stats in the entire league with D.Va in Stage 4. But as their semi-final match against the league's most feared team in the New York Excelsior began, the fuel looked outmatched. Mono and Mecco are just in on every single kill. 33 limbs, and we already have Jonah going in with the trance. Nobody else is gonna die here for New York. Seagull, you're the last one. Uncle's trying to float his way back into the fight, but it's not meant to be, and New York Excel. They're running away with the Tex. It may all be for naught unless Seagull and OG can go to town on this. Oh, Seagull, he's coming up with two, but that might be it. OG, the last man alive here, and nobody close enough. Harry Hook going for the Valve, trying to fly his way back into this fight, but they will not make it in time. It is going to be two ticks and a second map picked up for the New York XL, taking the lead in this best of five series. In classic Cinderella fashion, the few were not about to go down without a fight. Janice now with the bubble. He's got Animo here as well to back him. As long as that bubble survives, they may be able to hang in here just a little while longer. Trying to get onto Animo, trying to remove that healing. Animo, tight spot, and they leave the point just long enough for Dallas Fuel to find the victory. Upset win, a 2-0 clean win. Keeps Dallas Fuel alive in the semifinal. Ready to be dealt, so there'll be no hesitation on his side. Oh, the double kill from Siegel! Again with the stylish self-destruct, again with the massive plays. Jonak, Arc, Libero dead. That's gonna send New York packing. Should be able to get back Mecco. Maybe touch, he gets bashed away again. No one can touch. The Brigida bouncer comes through again and stops. Dallas Fuel making it exciting. Let's go to map number five, so. Unfortunately, this Cinderella story doesn't have a happy ending. Not like this, Dallas! Self-destruct out, not gonna find a kill. They're still on top of this New York Excel. Who, pushing. Can, who can actually deny it? Mickey will be the one to contest. Finally, somebody here for the Dallas Fuel. That allows for Timo to get out onto the point as well. Harry Hook trying to play the angles, just trying to stay alive, trying to get the heals, but the double kill, self-destruct, dunk! And it's New York, XL winning 3-2 in the end, advancing to the finals over Dallas. And New York Excelsior, slay the Dallas dream. David did everything he could to match Goliath. But in the end, the New York Excelsior defeated the Dallas Fuel in a grueling five-game series. And then Seagull left the nest. Upon completion of the Stage 4 playoffs, Siegel announced that he would not be returning to play with the Dallas Fuel for the Overwatch League's second season. Chat, it's not a debate. We're gonna have a talk, chat. I, I kept lying to myself for like two years, like over and over again. I would sit there and I would be like, oh yeah, I can do pro and I can stream at the same time. It'll be fine. Just think about being a professional player and you realize that every single day that you're trying to go pro, Someone who used to be a part of the stream that you built is leaving. And if you focus on pro play, you're you're letting down your stream. And if you focus, and if you try and balance both, you're letting down your teammates who are your second family. There's no winning. As has become a trend with popular streamers of late, Seagull left his professional team to pursue full-time streaming. Seagull began as one of the most popular personalities in the game as a streamer. The peak of his popularity, as we now know, was in Korea, where he inspired tons of his viewers to take up the game. Those same Korean players who eventually supplanted him in the Overwatch League. Seagull lived the esports dream. 
and in the end, it all came back to Twitch. Since Overwatch's beginnings, Siegel has been one of the game's most popular streamers, and when he returned to streaming full-time, nothing had changed. Oh, okay. Hi, Milk Dog. I'm, oh, I'm Omnic Dick. No? Wait, no, I'm just Omnic Dick. No, well, you are. Wait, no, 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 I'm just Omnic Dick. Oh no, God, no, 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 no. Dude, what's up? Oh my God, I can't, I can't believe I get to play with you. He brings something a little different to the table than your average top streamer. To be frank about it, he's just a really nice guy. Now, that's not to say that other top streamers aren't nice, but Siegel has found a way to wield it. He's not wild or dramatic or toxic. He's just wholesome and laid back, which makes him extremely likable. Since his departure from Dallas, Siegel's stream has seen a boost in numbers. During August of 2018, his first full month as a streamer since his Overwatch League career started, he averaged more than 14,000 viewers at a time. That's a large jump from his time balancing his pro career where he averaged just under 9,000 viewers at a time in June and July. In addition to his jump in average views, Siegel also had his metaphorical coming out party on August 28, when he peaked at more than 107,000 viewers. Overwatch had its cosmetic promotion called Twitch Drops targeting Siegel that day, and fans quite literally flocked to his stream. Now, I know most of you are here for the sprays, chat. Did I make it? Did I do it? Did we peak at 100k? Oh my god. <gasps> That's awesome. Even Jeff Kaplan said congrats. Thank you. I love you, chat. Thank you for being here. This is insane. Just thank you so much. With this stream, Siegel cemented himself as the undisputed king of streaming Overwatch. His journey back into streaming was immediately validated. And as one of the most lovable faces on Twitch, the Overwatch community celebrated him. Overwatch is still a very fast game, and that can make it difficult to stream at times while communicating with your community. Recently, Siegel has tried streaming games like Call of Duty Blackout and Fortnite to some success. Victory is not <laughs> oh, what a fucking run! But he's never come anywhere close to his Twitch drop numbers on stream. The Siegel story is something we're starting to become quite familiar with in the gaming world. And it wasn't that long ago when we saw Shroud retire to pursue his career as a full-time streamer. And now we've got one of the most popular NA Overwatch pros doing the same thing. So this begs the question, are esports starting to become just the beginning? Is streaming really the end goal if your dream is to spend your days playing video games? Or will these two career paths continue to operate adjacent to one another? Seagull is trying to prove that this trend will continue. The bird is taking flight for the top of the Twitch rankings. And only time will tell if he'll reach his destination. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.